Hey y'all, what's up? It's Jessica. Welcome back. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Today's video is going to be a first impression of the new Juvia's Place Eye & Magic Foundation. I just picked this up and I know it's been, <laughs> I'm on the late train, but I honestly did want to give it a try um, once they stocked my shade or the shade that I thought it would be. I really wanted to see what all the fuss was about because girl, there's a lot of fuss in these streets about this Juvia's Place foundation and just Juvia's Place in general. And I wanted to give you guys my perspective perspective, my feedback, my review, my opinion of this foundation and as well as the brand and the controversy of it all. If you want to hear my thoughts on the brand as well as how this foundation is going to work for me then let's dive into the video. So my skin needs to be primed and I'm going to go in with this Milk Hydro Grip Primer. This is new for me. As you can see I bought the tester or not the tester, the travel size because you know tested it out. Now I don't know if this foundation is matte or not but just in case I don't want my skin to be super dry so which probably won't be the case since I have oily combination skin <laughs> but just in case you know this LA weather is on trip mode and then I'm gonna just slap it in. Alright so here's the foundation. This is the Juvia's Place I Am Magic Velvety Matte Foundation so it is matte. So this foundation is described as radiant, long lasting, creamy and comfortable. This is a smooth application soft matte finish to give you flawless coverage. It says that it evens out your complexion. I have a scar right there so I want to see if it's going to do that like if it's going to cover my skin but not irritate my skin not dry out my skin, not get patchy. Like I really want to see how creamy and matte this foundation really is. So, so these foundations come in 42 shades and they range between Nubian Kingdom, which is deepest dark, deep dark, dark and rich tan. And then there is Medium Kingdom, which includes tan and medium. And then there's Light Kingdom, which is light and very light. So they have those categories in place for you to help you kind of find what range you are. I am in the Nubian Kingdom family and my shade that I decided to pick out is the 340 Kampala. Kampala? Am I saying that right? I'm gonna stick with Kampala. But that's the shade that I feel like would work best for me when I tried it out in Ulta. I do not like foundations like that come like this. I like pumps, that's just my personal preference, but you know it's foundation. I mean, what am I gonna do, cry about it? No. So let's try it on. I'm not even going to color correct, even though, like I said, I have that scar right there. I'm gonna leave her, because I wanna see what this is gonna do on its own. I'm just gonna put this on my finger and dot it down. I don't know why in my head, I feel like this is a lot of foundation. I hope it's not. Um, by the way, let me know if you guys have tried this foundation. Now, you guys probably have. I'm just really late, you know, so you guys can like let me know. <laughs> How you guys like this foundation but let's go in guys just gonna stipple this in oh it is really 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 thick super thick it covered that scar that scar up really quick really hoping I didn't put too much on but so far that coverage by the way, this brush that I'm using um, was sent to me by Revlon. I didn't know Revlon made brushes, but sis, this brush, I'm loving it. I am loving it. Ooh, I really, really, okay. Loving that coverage. Like, got foundation in my hair. That was the whole point of pinning my hair back. Not to get foundation on my hair, but of course, of course I do it, you know, clumsy. Guys, this foundation is very creamy, like extremely. If I get makeup in my hair one more time, I love how this blends out. Like that looks so good, for real. I'm not even gonna be on Front Street. That looks bomb. Definitely a foundation I would have to bring down to towards my neck if I was feeling that way, but since I'm a lazy girl, <laughs> I'm not gonna do that. But I would probably have to so that it can blend out more because this is a lot, this is a tinge bit more tan than what I currently am. Cause as you can see, like my neck is a little bit on the more, it's a little lighter than what the foundation is doing. The foundation is giving me like my summer shade, even though it's summer, but California didn't get the memo yet. I could get away with it by, you know, bringing the foundation on my neck. I don't like foundation. I don't like makeup on my neck. So it might have to just look like I have a mask on because, um, I'm not that pressed. <laughs> I really don't care that much. But if I was like really doing something, 
then I would like bring it down on my neck or I would just get tanned by the sun if it decides to want to come out and play. Right now it's not, it's gone. So this is just giving me my summer skin. So if it looks like it doesn't match, um, it's because I have not yet tanned on my face, but I love the shade. And this is definitely a shade that I would wear during the summer. That's pretty much all I need. I would not need another layer of foundation because the skin looks really, really good. I brought you guys in a little bit closer so you can see how that skin is looking. It looks really, really good. I definitely can get the sense of the radiant finish that it was explaining in the description. Definitely uh, it's giving me like some radiant shine, very smooth, creamy, comfortable matte. My face doesn't feel dry at all whatsoever. However, I do feel like I might get oily throughout the day with this foundation, only because <laughs> when a foundation is on the radiant side, I tend to get a little oily. But you know, that's what a little blotting powder, that's what that's there for. So it's not its not something that would stop me from using anything that says it has any radiance in it because I do love that radiant look. So there's also concealers included within this collection. My Ulta did not come out with these concealers. I was, I was trying to buy everything at once. So I did not get concealers. I didn't feel like ordering them either because it would just be too much of a time lapse between me buying it and ordering it. So I was just like, whatevs. I'm just gonna use concealers that I have on hand. So I'm going to use my Too Faced concealer. This is the Born This Way Multi-Use, multi Jessica, yes, Multi-Use. <laughs> Sculpin Concealer and Butterscotch. While my concealer dries down, I'm going to go in with my Fenty Matchstick and Espresso. I'm going to take my sponge and blend out my highlight. I need to figure out who makes this sponge. I cannot remember where I got this sponge from. I know it was sent to me a while back and I, I want to say it was from e.l.f. guys. But this sponge has been my favorite sponge. I love, I love this sponge even more than the Beauty Blender. I want to say it was e.l.f., but I'm not completely 100% sure if it was e.l.f. If you guys know, it's like a brush that has, or a sponge that has like this flat top right here. It's very flat. And then it's like the traditional point. But this has been my favorite sponge. I love it even more than the Beauty Blender. I just don't know who sent this to me and what brand. I really want to say it was e.l.f. and if so, I would be so, so excited because that means it's cheap. <laughs> but it performs, performs, it performs really, really well. And it's soft and it just really gets in there. I love the shape. So I just had to throw that out there that if you guys have seen this, let me know what company makes this type of brush. Um, but my skin is finished. This is with the foundation, the concealer, and this is how she's looking. I think she looks pretty good. She's looking pretty like radiant, pretty glowy. It's kind of blending in and melting into my skin. So I really love that. I think it looks really good before I set it. So I'm gonna go in with Laura Mercier translucent powder in uh, medium deep. So I'm gonna go in with the translucent Laura Mercier powder. I haven't used this one in a long while cause she's like super white, like, very very white um, but I'm gonna use it today <laughs> next I'm going to go into my Fenty setting powder in the shade honey I'm gonna use this blush by MAC. This is Highlight the Truth. It's their mineralized skin finish blush. Going to bronze my skin with my Fenty bronzer in Mocha Mommy. I'm going to highlight with this cute little highlight palette. This is by Too Faced. This is their Fruit Cocktail Blush Duo. So it comes with a blush and a highlighter and it smells like papaya. It smells really, really good. So I'm gonna go in with this highlight shade right here.
Okay guys, so I'm gonna go ahead and complete the rest of my face and then come back with my final thoughts. All right y'all, I am back. This is the completed look and I think it looks really, really good. It's like a subtle, simple, daytime glam look. Very, very subtle, but I think it looks so cute. <laughs> she did that. All right, so now I'm gonna share my thoughts on this foundation. And sis, let me just say, this foundation shook me. It's a really bomb foundation. As far as comfortability, it's extremely comfortable. Um, as far as like applying, like when you apply this, it's so creamy and smooth when you apply it on that it just blends in seamlessly. Like you don't get the streaks, you don't get that patchy, you know, the patchiness sometimes that comes with matte foundations. I didn't get that at all. My skin, my face looks amazing. This foundation is, it's up there. Do I believe this foundation is full coverage? Absolutely yes. I have a scar right there and usually when I'm doing my makeup if I have a scar I'll like color correct it first and then I'll go in with my foundation but I didn't have to do that with this one at all it covered my scar like I don't even see it and with some foundations I can kind of see it peeking through that's not a turn off for me um, like I told you guys in previous vi videos I don't mind blemishes kind of like showing because it looks like natural skin but this one <laughs> She said blemish wear. It has no residency, okay? My scar is gone. I'm not sure if you guys have tried this, but if you're looking for another foundation to try out, this is one you have to try out. I'm, I'm just saying. I don't make the rules, I'm just the messenger. I'm just the one that tries it on and if it's good, I'ma let y'all know if it's good. If it's bad, I'ma let y'all know it's bad. But girl, this is a good one. Like, and the match was spot on. Like, I didn't think I was gonna find a really good match honestly I'm just gonna be honest I thought the foundation was gonna run a little bit red I didn't think that they would come out with the shade that would be closer to my complexion because I feel like I have the hardest undertone to match it's golden and when it comes to creating foundations for deeper skin tones it always tends to go left <laughs> most of the times it tends to go left with the foundation being too red or too orange but for for them to hit it on the head, okay, with the hammer like bow, it looks so good. It matches with my, my body seamlessly. I should have filmed this eye look. I am shade Kampala 340 and this is amazing. And I love the fact that there are 42 shades. So I feel like within the broad spectrum of skin tones, you can find your match within this collection. Overall, I give this foundation a 9.5 out of 10. That's it, I'm the like I said, I'm the messenger, okay? I don't make the rules. I'm just telling you guys how I honestly feel about this foundation. Now, with all of that said, let's talk about Juvia's Place as a whole, as a brand. This is my first time trying a Juvia's Place product. I've never checked for the brand like that. And the reason being is because I, I, I'm a complexion girl. I love complexion products, if you guys cannot tell by now. I'm I'm a complexion girl. I'm not really an eyeshadow girl. And although they make, you know, really pigmented, from what I've seen, pigmented and beautiful palettes, I just never really checked for the brand because that kind of was like all I, I thought that they had was just, you know, eyeshadows. And although I love me some eyeshadows, I like to be able to have options within a brand, so I never really checked for them. I just did it. And then I believe they had like highlighting products, but to me, I've never tried the highlighting products. I'm just telling you my observation and opinion from what I've seen other people try. They kind of, I just don't feel like the formula is something that I would like. It looks very like patchy. I don't feel like it'll like blend well with my skin tone skin tone or maybe that's just how people apply it it just looks very harsh from what I've seen now I've never tried it though so I could be completely wrong but just from photos I've seen from people who tried it it just looks like it's sitting on their face and it's just too harsh so I was just like eh not a brand I was checking for even though it's black owned if I don't feel like the products are going to do me justice justice then I'm just not gonna check for it and of course if you have not heard this controversy in regards to how Juvia's place relates to black influencers. I can't really speak to that because like I said, I am not a black influencer who tried their products before, who's checked for the brand. I know literally nothing about the brand other than that it's black owned and that they carry eyeshadow palettes, they have highlighting palettes, and now they have complexion products. That's all I know. But just from what I've seen, when Juvia's Place first like hit the scene, it was a lot of smaller, 
black influencers that were really putting them out there on YouTube. Because I can recall even a few years ago seeing reviews of Juvia's Place. And because I'm not an eyeshadow girl, like those really like extreme bright color eyeshadows, I like to do that sometimes. But since I'm not one to do it all the time, I kind of didn't really check for it. But I did see a lot of influencers um, wearing the heck out of those palettes, promoting the heck out of the, those palettes, which is how I came to know Juvia's Place. The problem that people are stating is that Juvia's Place is not really checking for black influencers. In a nutshell, I guess when Juvia's Place started to become a little bit more popular in a lot of more mainstream channels, i.e., you know, like non-black influencers started to promote their products and rave about their products and, and introduce the brand to their audience, it kind of broadened Juvia's Place within the beauty world. So not only was not only were black audiences and black influencers talking about it, now you have non-black audiences and um, influencers talking about and buying this brand. Some of the black influencers kind of felt like Juvia's, Juvia's Place um, kind of gave them shot the deuces <laughs> once they started to get a little bit more popular by like the white audience. I'm not really sure because I have not experienced this with this brand because I don't know this brand or have worked with this brand. But what I can say is through my experience in life, I can attest to that being true. A lot of times when companies are just starting out, it's YouTube, it's the influencers on YouTube that get their name out there. It's the beauty community as far as makeup, because that's what we're talking about today. It gets the brand's name and their products out to an audience. So for Juvia's Place to be a black owned product or black owned brand, um, it was black, originally black influencers that were pushing the product out there because obviously from, as you can see from the artwork on the products, clearly they're targeting women of color. Okay, let's just let's just be real. So when women of color were promoting their products and and I guess introducing it to their women of color audience, the mass majority of these influencers, I'm sure their audiences were women of color. These influencers felt like it was kind of like Juvia's Place shot them to deuces and were extremely excited and happy that these non-white or these non-black influencers were you know, acknowledging them. I've been through something similar like that before where a brand may have been around for a while and then when a certain influencer, like say for example, there's been times where I've promoted products for a brand on the basis of me just loving the products. Like I would love something and I would just share with you guys uh, whether the brand knew or not. Well, the brand caught sight that I was promoting their products and they were super excited and they were like, yes, like, you know, we'll send you more products and da 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 da, -da -boo -boo, boom bam boom. And you form a relationship with that brand because they can genuinely see that you love the products without them reaching out to you. You just, on your own, like on your own regards, you just started to promote their products and share it with your audience. Whether you have a small platform or large platform, it doesn't matter. Um, you know, most of the time a brand will appreciate that. However, once an influencer with a large audience, say they have like over a million followers or an audience that's super, super huge, I feel like the brand forgets the micro influencers that supported them genuinely. And I'm not saying that the larger platforms aren't supporting these brands, like they're not genuine when they're doing it, but I feel like sometimes these, I feel like in some cases, the brand wasn't as popular until these micro influencers started to, you know, promote them. And then once the larger influencers caught wave of that, then they started promoting it. Obviously they're, they have a larger platform, they have more people watching them. So it, it looks like they have a little bit more influence. Whereas I feel like, not to say that larger platforms don't have influence, but I, from my experience of being here on YouTube and as a social media influencer, content creator, numbers aren't really influence. It, it doesn't equate to influence is what I'm trying to say. They really don't. There's some people who just follow you just because they like the fact that you have a lot of money and they like your hair color this day, they like your eye color, but that doesn't necessarily mean whatever you promote they're going to buy. And then there's some people who have a small audience and they have such a strong influence on their audience that, you know, 
whatever they say their their following just buys it so it has nothing to do with your actual numbers i'm not one to get on the social media bandwagon of the cancel culture i despise the can the cancel culture because um people just be canceling stuff just because they feel like it <laughs> it's like i'm gonna cancel this brand because someone so canceled the brand and you have no idea like someone wanted me to cancel zara the other day they were like oh my friend went into zara and she um experienced racism so you shouldn't shop there and i'm just like what what do that gotta do with me instead of having your own experience we hop on the cancel culture train and we just keep riding that mug and i'm just not one to do it okay <laughs> I don't cancel things just because social media says it's time to cancel. So social media social media does not run my life, okay? Will I be canceling Juvia's Place? Um, unless they do something specifically to me or something that I blatantly do not like, then yes, they will be canceled. So I went over to their Instagram, Juvia's Place Instagram, to kind of see, you know, what the brand had to say about the ac accusations and things like that. What I will say is I didn't kind of like, I didn't like their response to people. It was very like passive aggressive, very like nice nasty and <laughs> I didn't look I didn't like that from a brand it felt very personal when it should not feel personal because as a brand if you are being hit or faced with some controversy um, it's your job to kind of fix it it's your job to either a not respond to people and then create a statement in regards to the situation but to respond to people in a passive aggressive or nice nasty way it's just mm -mm, not a good look so i definitely didn't like that at all because if i were to voice my concerns or something in regards to a brand and i'm being like professional and polite i would expect the same thing from you but am i just not going to use their products if i like the product i'm going to use it period unless they say something personally to me that's not cool or they do something that's just blatantly like are you are you for real i think the unfortunate thing of it all is that a lot of times the micro influencers get overlooked we get overlooked because we don't have a lot of numbers or we don't have a lot of views the brands that you know initially messed with you and once they get a little clout from a larger platform then it's just like they act like you don't exist or they treat you differently and my feelings don't really get involved in stuff like that you know like i'm not gonna lose sleep over it i'm not going to go on a rant on youtube or instagram over it because it's really not that deep for me like if you don't mess with me then you just don't mess with me <laughs> like what am i gonna do lose sleep over it no but it is an issue it is it is an issue and i can see why you know people get upset about it and i can see why certain influencers like it does kind of sting a little bit because it's like wow is it really like that but guys in this business and that's just any i think that's any genre of work you gotta value and appreciate your own worth because do not expect for these brands and for a lot of other elements to appreciate your worth they're, they're not really going to see the value in it you have to see the value in it otherwise you'll start questioning yourself you're, you'll start doubting yourself and you'll lose sleep over things that just aren't that serious i hope that they realize that the people that valued your company and that shared your brand with their audience that you respect those people and still have a heart for them don't reach back out to them when you want to promote a product or something but you weren't really messing with them before be just as excited when your micro influencers review your products when the micro influencers you know rave about your products don't just be super excited when a non-black huge influencer reviews your products like and i know you know this is a brand this is a company this is a business this is about money but let's just make sure integrity is involved that's all that's all that's my thought on that whole situation thing i hope what i said made sense i definitely do recommend this overall my face looks amazing these this foundation is so good i definitely gonna be using this again if you have not subscribed subscribe okay hit that red button and then turn on the bell right there or down there or over here be sure to give this video a thumbs up leave me a comment down below and i'll see you guys in my next video bye